Hey, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and when many adventure travelers and RVers think of Utah, they think only of the mighty five national parks. Arches, Canyonlands, Bryce Canyon, Zion, and Capitol Reef. However, there's a whole lot more to our home state, and we'd like to give you a taste of that on this episode of Grand Adventure, so stay tuned. The towering Wasatch Mountains rise right from the population centers along the Wasatch Front, stretching for 160 miles from Salt Lake City north to the Idaho border and south beyond Provo. 85% of Utah's population lives within 15 miles of the Wasatch Mountains, which are named for a Ute Indian word meaning high mountain pass. Mountain snowfall in some places exceeding 500 inches annually, provides drinking water for most of Utah's residents. Rugged peaks rise to nearly 12,000 feet, formed by uplift along the Wasatch Fault and sculpted by glaciers, none of which remain today. Hillsides are home to a forest consisting of Douglas fir, subalpine fir, Engelmann spruce, and aspen trees. Hillsides are emblazoned in color when abundant wildflowers bloom in July. An epicenter of silver mining in the 19th century, the Wasatch is still littered with the remains of many of those mines today. World-class recreation can be found throughout the Wasatch Mountains, where exceptional hiking opportunities abound.
There are numerous state park and forest service campgrounds, as well as plenty of opportunities to boondock in the Wasatch. Mountain biking is also world-class in the Wasatch, where a wide variety of cross-country trails have been developed. Lift-serviced downhill mountain biking is also available at a number of the area's ski resorts. There are several small reservoirs with excellent flatwater kayaking and fishing, including Little Dell, Causey Reservoir, and Tibble Fork Reservoir. Climbers will also find many sport and trad routes available on the granite that comprises much of the Wasatch Mountain Range. Also nearby Salt Lake City, Antelope Island is a state park on a 42 square mile island in the Great Salt Lake, home to a herd of American bison, in addition to its namesake pronghorn antelope. Antelope Island is connected to the mainland by an eight mile long causeway. Across the Great Salt Lake, the Golden Spike National Historic Site preserves the very spot where the first transcontinental railroad was completed in 1869, joining the Central Pacific Railroad with the Union Pacific Railroad. Regular viewers of Grand Adventure will recognize this scene of Forsyth Reservoir in central Utah's Fish Lake Mountains from our introduction sequence to each of our videos. It's one of our favorite boondocking locations in the entire state for its tranquility and natural waterfront beauty. In southern Utah, Cedar Breaks National Monument 
is often eclipsed by the nearby Zion and Bryce Canyon National Parks, but is a worthy destination in its own right. Also nearby is the unique Coral Pink Sand Dune State Park. While the beauty of the area around Kanab sits just outside of Zion National Park's East Gate. In central Utah, Nine Mile Canyon, the world's longest art gallery, is known for its extensive rock art, most of it created by the Fremont culture and the Ute people. The rock art, shelters, and granaries left behind by the Fremont make Nine Mile Canyon a destination for archaeologists and tourists alike. A little further to the south, the last 100 miles of the Green River descends into Labyrinth Canyon, a flat water stretch of river accessible only by boat. This is a bucket list trip for kayak touring, and the river continues into Stillwater Canyon within Canyonlands National Park before its confluence with the Colorado River. But paddlers may travel from the town of Green River to Mineral Bottom entirely on BLM land where unlike the national park stretch of the river, the permitting requirements are trivial. We've already mentioned the wedge of the San Rafael Swell in previous episodes, but as one of our favorite camping destinations in all of Utah, it more than deserves a mention in this video as well. Here, dispersed boondocking campsites are available right on the rim of the spectacular San Rafael Gorge, also known as the Little Grand Canyon. But the San Rafael Swell isn't just the wedge, it's huge, occupying roughly 3,000 square miles of central Utah, bisected by Interstate 70. The area on either side of I-70, known as the Central Swell, is a giant dome-shaped anticline of sandstone, shale, and limestone formed some 40 to 60 million years ago. It's since been eroded by flash floods that have created numerous valleys, canyons, gorges, mesas, and buttes. This constitutes some of the best boondocking in the entire state of Utah.
At the southern end of the swell sits Goblin Valley State Park, home to thousands of hoodoos, referred to locally as goblins. These formations of mushroom-shaped rock pinnacles stand up to several yards tall. Adjacent to Goblin Valley, numerous slot canyons pierce the San Rafael Reef, providing exceptional canyoneering opportunities, both technical and non-technical. While Goblin Valley State Park has a campground, we prefer to boondock at the foot of Wild Horse Mesa. And just for the record, the Moab area isn't just about Arches and Canyonlands National Parks. There's a whole lot to see outside of the National Parks too, just with no entrance fee and far fewer people. Lake Powell is a massive reservoir of the Colorado River along Utah's southern border. Because so few roads reach the lake, our favorite way to see Lake Powell is aboard a kayak.
Finally, in our opinion, no RV camping trip to Utah would be complete without a boondocking stay in Valley of the Gods in the far southeastern corner of the state. So we hope that this video has given you a taste of what's available throughout Utah beyond the Mighty Five National Parks, but this list is by no means meant to be exhaustive. So if you have a favorite spot that you'd like to share, please mention it in the comments section down below this video. Also down below, if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. If you're not yet one of our grand adventurers, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down in the lower corner, right corner of your screen right now, because we premiere new adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. We'd be honored if you share a grand adventure with your friends and family. And until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you soon.